I gotta ask you a question, Bozo. My name is Mike. How are you? Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Alright, it's just Buzz. Check this sign out right here. Oh, this is Buzz. So I gotta ask you, Brother Isaiah. Yeah. If I were to ask you, what is your nationality, what would you tell me it is? African American. African American. Yeah. And we've heard many of answers. So, do you know where they, those two words came from, African American? Not at that. How, how old are you, Brother Isaiah? How old are you, Isaiah? I'm 28. You're 28 years old. Mm -hmm. That term came, that, that byword about our people came up in the 80s. Uh -huh. So before then, what would we call? We were called color, we were called Negro, we were called many of things before we was called African American. Mm -hmm. And you know what those two words derive from? Two Edomite men. Right. Scipio Africanus and Amerigo Vespucci. Right. So do we come from, well you, do you come from two white men? Yeah, can two men come together and birth a child? Yeah. No, they can't. And first of all, if that were to happen, that's what the about, name though came from white people. Those, yeah, those two people. names came from two conquering white men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what does God call us in the Bible? You know what God calls us? Children. children of what? God called us the children, children of Israel. The That's children right. of That's Israel. Right. Princes of the power with God. So, but as I'm showing this side right, you see this right here? Uh -huh. So called American blacks, you from the tribe of Judah. A mighty tribe. Guess who, guess who else came from that tribe? The mightiest man, I'm gonna give you a clue. The mightiest man that ever walked this planet. Make it play. Nah. Who do you think that is? Me? Sorry. No. Uh, the greatest man to ever walk this planet. Not saying you not, not no, you couldn't no. be great. But to me, yeah. Who was the greatest man to ever walk this planet? You know? Jesus the Christ, the That's black right. Messiah. That's right. right. He came from the tribe of Judah. Show him that in Hebrews chapter 7. We're going to show that out of the Bible. Then we're going to give you the description of Jesus the Christ. I'm going to ask you a question. Read what you got. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, and verse 14. Bring it out. For it is evidence huh? that our Lord sprang out of Judah. So. Brother Isaiah, if something is, it's evident, Brother Isaiah, that you have on a brown hoodie. Correct? Uh -huh. So how do I know that? I can, see it. I can see it. So guess what? Somebody saw Christ and they gave, they gave a description of what they saw. Because Christ walked the earth. Who hung on the cross? Christ did. Who, who did the disciples follow? The disciples followed Christ. So this is a man that walked the earth. So now we're going to give you evidence that Christ came from Judah. We're going to give you a description of Christ, and then we're going to show you what Christ's people look like. So jump to Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. So John the Revelator on the Isle of Patmos, he saw, he saw a vision. He'll show you what, tell you what he saw. We which got one and one. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. Hey. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So this is the revealing of Jesus the Christ. Read. Verse 14. Come on. His head and his hairs were white like wool. You see this brother right here to your left? You see he has the woolly hair and the white section of hair? Read. As white as snow. Is there any other people on the face of this planet that has hair like us? Any other people? No. So that makes one, that's one point that makes us a peculiar people. But our enemies tell us, oh, you're nothing, you're dirty, you're filthy. But the most beautiful things are the what? The most rare things. The greatest thing of the things are the most rare. Keep reading. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like a divine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. But that's it. You got white sneakers on, right? If I burn the white sneakers on, what color are they going to turn? Black. So they said not only was Christ a brown complexion because he was the color of bronze, they said he was so dark as if he yeah, burned in a furnace. So not only did Christ have woolly textured hair, but guess what? Christ is a dark skinned man. That's so right, you saw him walking right. the planet today, he'll look just like your brothers that surround you right now. That's right. right. So what does his people look like? Give me Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 2. So if Christ was a black man, and it's evident that he came from the tribe of Judah. That's what right. do the tribe of, what do the people from the tribe of Judah look like? Yeah, He's been pulled from his brother. Read what you got. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, and verse 2. Read. Judah mourneth. So it's Judah mourneth, come on. And the gates there of language. Read. They are black. They are what? They are black. So if the people from the tribe of Judah are black, and Christ is black, and it's evident that he came from the tribe of Judah, what does that let you know? Christ is what? So if you were about to ask you to point to the image of Christ up here, based off those scriptures, what would you point to? All praises to the Most High. All praises to the Most High. So brother Isaiah, when you go home and you look in the mirror, you shouldn't see the devil, you shouldn't see the enemy. You should see the image of Christ. So guess what? 
what it's, what's that, why is that going to be a determining factor in your life? So when you see your brothers, you're going to see the image of Christ. Right. And you're going to treat them as such as you would treat Christ if he was walking this earth today. Because Christ is the greatest man on earth, so guess what? He led by example. Christ kept the commandments. He told us to keep the commandments. Give me John chapter 14 and verse 15. We're going to show you what Christ told us out of his mouth what we should do. Read what you got. This is the book of John, chapter 14 and verse 15. Read. If you love me, keep my commandments. Christ said if you love him, keep his commandments. Christ wasn't a hypocrite. When he tell you to do something he's not doing himself, no, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. Christ, has kept, Christ kept the commandments. We're going to show you. Give me uh, chapter 15, verse 14. Watch this. John 15 and 14. Bring it out. This is the book of John. Chapter 15 and verse 14. Three. Ye are my friend uh -huh. if you do whatsoever I command you. You, you hear what Christ said? Christ said he calls you a friend. Just like God called Abraham a friend because he kept the commandment. Christ said you are my friend if you do that. If you keep my commandments, you do what I tell you to do. He said you love me, keep my commandments. You a friend of mine if you keep my commandments. And you gave me a duty to do. And you say, bro, go to the store right quick, man, and grab, uh, do me a favor. Escort my family to the car to make sure they get there safely. Because there's a lot of danger outside. If I do, if I don't do that for you, and I know it's dangerous, am I a friend to you? They all depend. What you mean depend? If it's danger outside, hey. and I gotta get your family from point A nah, to look, point all B. Friends ain't friends, so, yeah. Exactly. So what would a friend do? I mean, what, what would a real friend do based off the scripture? Read it again, I mean, 15, look, 14. Look, somebody real. Ye are my friend. So if you do. Whatsoever I command you. So what would a friend do? Somebody real? We'll just keep it real. That's how I put it. They gonna either look out, watch the family, or they not. You know what I mean? So a friend would do it, but somebody that's not a friend, they wouldn't do it. You correct? Don't know. Maybe a friend. But you'll won't know in that time. If somebody that's not a friend with. That one that don't make sense. Hey. Read it again. Hold on, listen. Read it again. Read it slow for them. Ye are my friends. You are my friend, brother Isaiah. If you do whatsoever I command you. That's a big if. If you do what I command you, you are a friend. Somebody that's not a friend not going to do anything for you. So I'm going to show you something. Chapter Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 16. Here we go. We're going to go over some things. I'm going to show you how we got in this situation. You tell me if a friend would do this or if an enemy would do this. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 16. Now this is one of the curses that was brought amongst our people for breaking God's commandments. For not keeping the commandments. Because a friend will keep the commandments of God. Read this. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 68. Read it up. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So God is going to bring us into Egypt again with ships. If you read Exodus 20 and 2, Egypt is synonymous with the word of slavery or bondage. It's called house of bondage. It means slavery. So God tells them, if we don't do what he commands us to do, he's going to take us into slavery again with ships. What kind of ships, brother Isaiah? Look at this. What kind of ships? Cargo slave ships. That's what's going to happen. Read. By the way, whereof I spake unto you, Come on. thou shalt see it no more again. You're not going to see our home anymore again. It may seem like it. slavery, what? Cargo slavery, chattel slavery was not that long ago. 1800s was not that long ago. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. So. Now you'll be sold into your enemies. Would a friend sell you into slavery? Bring it out. Would a friend sell you into slavery? Friends, You got friends and you got enemies. They're not the same thing. Get that frenemy stuff out your head. They're not the same thing. A friend would do, do what, they, what you command them to do. Christ said, you're a friend if you do keep my commandments. Right. But your enemies sold you into slavery. So would a friend sell you into slavery? No, they wouldn't. A friend ain't gonna say into slavery, but a friend would keep the commandments of God. Right. Read. Keep reading. For bond men, for slave men, and bond women. So we'll be sold to our enemies for slave men and slave women. Keep reading. And no man shall buy you. You know what that buy you means? An old Quaker term me means nobody will be able to redeem you. How many leaders, prominent leaders in our community, have risen up? But it's to no avail, we haven't been delivered out of this situation. Many of them have. Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Nat Turner, he tried, 
He was reading the Bible, but he still wasn't keeping command. Many have risen up, but to no avail, nothing has come. We have any help. Nobody's coming to help us yet. Give me Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 17. And then what, else, then what else would we do, Isaiah? What else do we do when we look for help? We try to go to the ballot box to find help. Right. We try to go to the other enemy, to the, our enemies that sold us on auction blocks to find help. Right. The people that made the stock market was based off of you. It was based off of your forefathers and your foremothers. The whole Wall Street was based off of our captivity, our slavery. That's the right. whole entire world is spinning off our captivity. Right. From the records you selling up on, on the um, internet, from our sisters soliciting their body for sex. Right. 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 For us eating this unclean food, you know how much pork belly go for on the stock market? Man, that thing up there with gold and diamonds. Pork belly! That's crazy. On the stock market, because Negroes, and when I say Negro, I'm talking about blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, mm -hmm. can't leave the damn pork alone. Wake them up! The world is spinning based off of our sin. Hey. And captivity. Uh, what did I have you to go to, so? Limitation. Limitation, chapter 4, verse 17. So like I was saying before, we try to go to other, since we can't have ourselves, we try to go to other nations to look for help. But the help is right here in the Bible that God told us. The help is right here in the Bible. Lamentations chapter 4 verse 17. And we're going to show you that. Because this year, a lot, many of our people across the country, where they could be going there? They be going to that ballot box, ready to vote. What's on the ballot? Nothing in our community. Who stands up for us in the UN? Who out of our people stands up for us in the UN? Who says, hey, in America, the so-called blacks and Hispanics, they're going through X, Y, and Z. Their water is messed up in Mississippi. Their water still messed up in Michigan. Hey, we got to do something about this rap thing. Do you know rap is banned in some country? They said, no, we didn't have that garbage up in here. You got it? Lamentation chapter 4, verse 17. Watch this. Watch what the Bible says. Read. The book of Lamentation, chapter 4, verse 17. Come on. As for us. Our eyes yet fail for... Hold on. As for us, our eyes have yet failed. For what? Can you read? For our vain help. For our vain help. Come on. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. We watched for a nation that can't help us, that can't save us. What do they do? Keep reading. They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. Look what happens. How many, how many of our brothers and sisters have been gunned down or chased down. You know what? Let's not even talk about the police. Let's not even talk about the police. How many citizens, non-black and Hispanic citizens, have hunted us down in the back in the deep south? Recently, bodies popping up, people being hung. Bring it Find, out. Finding brothers and sisters with all their organs missing. We've been hunted in the streets. Now, we, we're not even talking about law enforcement. We're talking about regular people. You can't even go for a jog around the block without us being hunted down by another nation. Video footage of a brother having laceration on his back, running for his life. And next thing you notice, he found up disemboweled body parts all over town. And guess what happens? We look to a, we look to a nation that can't help us. That's right. not gonna help us. Right. That yeah. can't save us. Right. Oh, police ain't doing nothing. We gotta send this out, we gotta send it out. We gotta help, we need help. Right. We crying, we trying to go on. What's that thing? We trying to get go from me. Don't nobody give a damn about black people That's or right. Hispanic people. We, you on your own, you looking for a nation that can't help? Uh, keep reading, hunt our footsteps again. They hunt our steps. Come on. That we cannot go in our streets. Come on. Our end is near. Uh -huh. Our days are fulfilled. Uh -huh. For our end is come. You see that? We have no hope. But guess what we do have hope in? The Bible is our hope. That's God's right. law, such commandments is our hope. God gave us a duty. You know what your purpose is in life, what your duty is in life as an Israelite man? Because you're from the tribe of Judah. We showed you how to bite. Right. And Christ, the black Messiah, told you, hey, if you my friend, keep my commandment. Because he's going he gonna to deliver us out of this mess. You see all this right here? Look behind you. Look behind you. You see all this right here? This is going to be desolate. This place is going to be level. Right. Level. Right. None of this going to be here. Goodbye, Charlie. Goodbye, Burger King. Goodbye, Shell. Goodbye, Family Dollar. All you see that brand new construction over there? Mm -hmm. All that for night. All this gonna be gone. Right. Go. Nuclear destruction all over the place. That's so right. Up out of here. But all we can deliver out of here if you keep God's commandments. What is the nation?
nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models.